Salut coders, this is Biski here. Welcome back to another tutorial. Home greetings to those who are joining us for the first time. In this tutorial, I want to show you how you can integrate with Keyclock and Google sign in as a provider identity. And I will show you step by step of how to do it. And we are going to use Google sign in dependence for our Flutter project and a deal to call the Keyclock endpoint so that you can get the access token that you can use on your backend. So here, yeah, this is what you are going to achieve after the end of this video tutorial. So a user can log in here. So after a user log in, you can see uh, we get the access to the token. This is a Google token. And this is then below. This is an access token that we get from Keyclock. So the user was just created. Let's go to the key clock and try to refresh here. This user wasn't there and it was created when someone tried to log in with the Google. So by the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to do this and we are going to configure that client ID, that Android here, and you can now further do on for iOS and other web application that you want to achieve. So let's get started. There are dependence that we need first. The first one is Google sign in and the other one is Geo. So we want to send our request to Keyclock uh, via HTTP request. So we are using Geo dependence. And for sign in, for that pop up to show Google sign in where you select one account from the list of accounts, we are going to use Google sign in. So we need to add this dependence. I have a project. Uh, which I already created. So please add this dependence, Google sign in and uh, to your dependence and then click PubGet. So I, I've already created the designs uh, of this application so that we don't spend time on creating the click button. And so here we need to implement now the logic. So we want to, for Google sign in, based on this documentation for Google sign in, there's, if you scroll down, if you come here, this they are saying we must add this. So let's just add this. For now, don't worry about adding this configuration. We are going to do it very soon. So we can come here. I wrote something like initialize. And in here, here let's import this. So we can remove this. This is optional. So we can remove it. Then for our scopes, we need email and profile. We want to read profile. We need to get the email and profile of the user. Then we need to come back again. They are saying here, we need to end with this uh, try catch Google sign in. So let's just copy this. This is the logic to, to, to sign in. So we can let's go to our button when user click that button we need to call that method what i can do i can remove this i can do this yeah it will call google sign in then the next thing after we sign in we need to listen to the event like the account the user selected and the access tokens that we are going to use to get the access token from our quick look authorization server so we have to go in in here in our init state then we just say then we call this on user changed on current user changed here we just say listen and you can listen to the event here and put a semicolon if there's an error let's Let's do this. I will just say error. Let's end with the error method. Then we can say print. We can print our error here. Then here for the event, this one, it's going to be a user. Let's say we just say if it's, I say event dot I need an access token. I need an authentication dot then.
I can do this. Then we want to listen to this authentication. And here we can check it might be now. Then from here we need an access token. This is going to be our access token. We we'll put a semicolon, then we say string. So this is the token that we want to use to log in. I think here it will be why is it expecting? Yeah, we are supposed to to remove this and it will be like this and I'll say access token. Let print this access token. So if we try to log in, we are going to give an error here. So let's test this. Let's test this so that we are able to get the access token. I know we are not getting a, we are not going to have an access token because we didn't enable like the permissions or sort of things. Uh, if your application failed to do that, I will assist you. So let's try to log in with Google. I'll click this button. You can see to show the list of accounts and I will select the account that I am going to use to log in. Now we have an error and this error it's because we don't enable our application we didn't enable our application to handle the, that uh, access token so let's look for the error uh, this is the error that we are getting so what we need to do if you have this kind of error we need to enable this application let's go to the android this is an android one let's go to the app open our gradle file then once you are there we need to get the name of this so we need to go to our console so on previous tutorial i showed you with quick look how to create this um, credentials and auth screen so we need to create a new credentials for our android application so so that it will work with this one for this authentication so for this we need to go to credentials create credentials you select the project so this is the project that we created on the previous tutorial click create credentials and it's going to be oauth client id and the type we are going to say android because we are testing on android the package name is the one that i showed you and we need to generate this this fingerprint this share one and you can copy this let me open a terminal here and I can run this. The password it's Android because you are using a debug key. Password was incorrect. Let me do it again. Android. So we need this SHA one. I will copy my SHA one here. And I will paste it here. So after pasting it. I can say create and you can download this if you need it. So this is the Android client that I just created. So on the application, let me try to run the application again. Then I'll click login and I'll select my account again. You can see after selecting the account, I got this access token. We logged it here this is the access token that i can use so to test this access token on the previous tutorial we tested this with the google access with the google oauth2 developers playground so i can now we want to see if it's work right now here so here we want to replace this access token and i can paste it I think you are now understand about token exchange. You can watch my previous tutorial for you to understand these parameters, why I'm using these parameters for key clock. Then I can say send request. You can see we get this response. So right now what you want to do, we want to implement this with the DO. We want to call a 
a post endpoint this one to our key clock server then with these parameters and we can get this access token and we can use this access token on our application to access the the endpoint of your backend so let's now come back again we need these parameters so what we can do in this core method so in this login i will just say login and i want to pass the provider it's going to be google and our access token so here we need to to implement the key clock to call the key clock login endpoint so we need a deal you just say geo we need also a map i'll just say string and i'll say data So if we come to our Dio plug uh, dependency, let's see for an example what they used. So here we want to use a post method. This is the post method that you want to use when you are sending our requests. So what I can do now, I can just copy this. This is going to be our post method. And for the data, we want to send this data right uh, want so this data is going to be these parameters so let me copy these parameters and i can come here i can just say data grant type and here we have to pass the grant type so what i can do i can just do bulk edit and i can copy this and i can come back let me so that i don't have to come here multiple times and i'll paste this so the grant type for this is going to be exchange token and i can paste it here going to be a key value pair and the other subject token it's going to be an access token so we are using the access token from google so you can do this again and then the client id we created this client id yeah it's supposed to be on urn this is our client id let's copy the client id And the subject token this is the token that we get from google and this is the one that we are going to exchange then here we are going to get the token then the issuer is going to be google which is our provider so we can use this method again for facebook and i just say provider so this is going to be our data so once you have our data we need an option like this and we just say options and from our options you can see we need a content type and this content type it's coming from the headers and we need we don't need this we need form you are we need the we need form you are a content type so why did i choose this header because if you are looking in if you are testing here you see we are using this is content type which is form you are encoded so this is the content type that we are using and the method it's post and we are going to send this as our data so once you send our request here then here we need the url so for the url i will just come here 
and copy this URL. And I will paste this URL here. This is the URL that we want to get an access token. Then we can wait for a response. So here we just say print. Then we can say status to know the status. Then it's going to be response dot status code. And for, for data, we just say response dot data. And this data, we can, or I can remove this. Let me, let me remove everything that is in here. I'll just say response data. So once we, we are successful, we are going to get an access token and the token that we are going to, re so I can delete this and we can test. So let's test now. Let me test the logging now. So this is your access token. So you can use this access token to access your backend, but I don't think this access token is working correctly because this log is showing, uh, is truncating the other details. So we can't get the whole access token here because it's very long. Let me try to do this. JWT IO, I think it will fail here because I'm suspecting. Yeah, it's the, the JWT is correct because it's invalid because some of the details were not being, were not logged here. So you can use this access token now to call your backend so if this if this was working you can now use it to get the you can now use it you can now use it to authenticate and paste your access token and then authorize but this one it won't work because my access token has been truncated and i can't get the whole data so i will get 401 this is how you can integrate with google keyclock and how to log in with keyclock so thank you guys for watching this video Let's meet on another video. Salut Kodas.